Mike Gill, Hunter Brody's with me on the Sports Bash. You can watch us live on the uh, Sports Talk with Brody. You know, at Brody one on Twitter. I'm at Mike Gill's show. And he, he's at J.F. McMullen. And you can hear him each and every day with Football at Four. Probably one of the more unique segments in all of radio. Nobody else does the football at four. We created it. We talk football every day, and here we go. Plenty to get into, John. How are you, sir? Doing well. Uh, Self-quarantining, although my wife seems to send me out every day, so I don't know how that's getting accomplished. We are quarantining on my porch here in uh, the friendly confines of my house. So uh, we're doing our best. But hey, stuff keeps happening. The NFL is not quarantining at all. And this morning, Howie Roseman picked up the phone that someone else probably touched and called the Detroit Lions and made a deal for Darius Slate. Probably not shocking, but what did you think of the deal and, you know, how you receive it after we know they wanted Byron Jones? Um, I, I, I think it's a good deal. Uh, I think, obviously, it wasn't uh, plan A. We've talked about that a lot. Uh, the Eagles did target Byron Jones. That's the player they wanted. Um, I, I think you have to look at it uh, from two perspectives. This team wants to get younger. And that's one of the reasons uh, they, they earmark Jones, although he's 27. Darius is only 29. But if you look at it long term, they worked out the three-year extension. Uh Essentially, average annual value makes him the highest paid corner. So uh, you have to be concerned at, at 31, 32. But it's how he usually does. You can get out of this if things don't go right after two years. So I don't think that's too much of a concern. The only part that's a concern is you're giving up assets. And this team has talked consistently about turning a bit of a corner and going in a different direction, trying to get younger. We talked a lot about having two consecutive years of only five draft picks, and it was important to get more draft picks in there this season. The Eagles believed that, but they didn't get Byron Jones. They kicked the tires on Trey Waynes. They kicked the tires on Chris Harris, lesser corners, uh, too too expensive for them. So they gave up two draft picks, uh, but they got – the best corner available. I mean, this guy's better than Byron Jones. And I, I just put on Twitter, it's not particularly close either. This is a playmaker. This is a legitimate lockdown corner. There's very few of them in the NFL. I think it's 19 career interceptions versus two for Byron Jones. This is a guy who travels uh, against great receivers uh, I mean, this is a big-time guy. So, you know, I, I think when Howie says we need to get younger and everybody tries to hold him to that, I mentioned yesterday on the show, it doesn't mean every move is going to be used at every position, all 53 guys. You saw an opportunity to get a good player, you got a good player. Uh, yeah, I want to go back to a couple of things you said, John, because they, they really ring – this is the best corner available. This guy's better than Byron Jones, and it's not particularly close. That's what we were kind of deciphering beforehand. Their plan A was Byron Jones, not because they thought he was a better player, but because they thought he was a younger player. But the money's about the same, and they got the better player, correct? Yeah, I, I mean, I will say the money is not the same. Everybody focuses on average annual value. What you focus on is guaranteed. So essentially, the Eagles guaranteed Darius Slay thirty million. They would have had to go to probably sixty million on Byron Jones. So that's the difference. That's uh, now free agency is uh, two. It's about projection, as I also mentioned. So today. Darius Slay is the better player, and that's where I say it's not particularly close. And in the rearview mirror, it's not even close, not remotely close. He's been a much better player. Question is, he's going to be the better player a year, two years down the line. Hopefully, in the case of Jones for the Dolphins, they would be four or five years. Uh, I would think the Eagles want to get two, three years at a high level out of Darius Slay. So a lot of it depends on your projection. And I don't, I don't want to couch this in any way. The Eagles would have preferred to have Byron Jones. That's who they targeted. 
that was number one. Anybody who's telling you differently is way off base. So it, it is not their original plan, but ultimately, uh, I talk about it a lot, it's better to be lucky than good at, at certain times. Uh, I think they lucked out here because I don't think Byron Jones, and I talked about that a lot as well, I don't think he would have held up under the expectations in Philadelphia. Do you think he matches up with the other team's best receivers? Or do you think Jim Schwartz is just going to have him on one side of the field and then kind of go with that mentality? No, he'll travel him at times. He's not going to travel him. In other words, it's not going to be, oh, receiver A on this team is the best receiver, so Slay is going to follow him around the field. Uh, I think in certain instances when you have true uh, legitimate top-tier receivers, DeAndre Hopkins of the world, I, I think he'll travel. And, and a lot of people say Jim doesn't travel cornerbacks. He has traveled cornerbacks in the past when he has cornerbacks that can travel. Now we will have one uh, who can travel. But that doesn't mean he's going to be doing it every week, every play. That's not how it works. John McMullen, Football at Four. Um, so they have Slay. The opposite side of him now, is this another free agent? Is this current roster? Is this draft? How do they fill that other side? Because you feel really good about what you have on one side now. Yeah, I, I mean, as we stand here today, they would let Rasul Douglas and Sidney Jones kind of battle it out for the other starting corner slot. But I don't think you'd go into it right now and say, Okay, that's the plan. If if you have a another, you know, the market's going to start to come down now, and you're going to start to get value. Um, and if they're able to get uh, another player, uh, a veteran player, um, in in the draft, I still think they're going to add a body somewhere in the premium rounds uh, at the corner. Um, so I I do think there's going to be other names in the mix. So it's not necessarily going to end up as just Rasul Douglas versus Sidney Jones. But as we stand here today, what the Eagles have, that would be the battle for that other starting corner slot. And then you would have Avante Maddox, Gervon LeBlanc inside. And then the safeties would be Rodney McLeod, Jalen Mills. But even in Jalen's case, I, I think ultimately at some point there will be some competition. Do you, now, let me ask you, what What do you think their view is at this point of Sidney Jones? Are they ready to give him one more shot, or are they already kind of established that, hey, we were the second-round pick, we took a shot, he would have been a better guy, the injury, and he's just not going to be the guy we projected? Or are they still holding out hope? You know, it's funny. I, well, I think I know how he is holding out. And for understandable reasons. I mean, that's how GMs are. They always want their premium picks to work out. Uh, I think Jim Sports is a little bit more uh, trending in the other direction. And I think you saw the evidence of that last year. Look, he, he was trusting Craig James at one point before uh, Sidney Jones. I mean, he was down. He was in the doghouse, Sidney Jones. Um, can he get out of it? I think a lot of that depends on what the Eagles do bring in. And, and as, I, as I said, there's going to be another body or two added at the cornerback position, whether it's a veteran, lesser veteran, it's not going to be another top-tier guy like Darius Slay, but uh, perhaps a guy who can play or maybe a second or third-round pick, uh, and you throw them into the mix. Uh, but I, I do think Sidney Jones – has a hill to climb. I don't think there's any question about that. Yeah. And uh, I think the bigger hill is is from Jim Schwartz. How he kind of wants him to the light yeah. switch to go off. That's that's an interesting take from uh, from you know just thinking about all right we drafted this guy we thought we were getting the guy that was you know the, the Cowboys have done this too where they've drafted players who were hurt and they didn't play for a whole year and Jalen 
Smith has turned out to be a pretty good player um, for them, and, and it hasn't worked out so far for Sydney. We'll see. Uh, Logan Ryan, any opportunity there at all? Who's saying he, you know, I'll, I'll sign for a shorter term deal? Uh, he he will. Uh, from every indication, Logan kind of understands he's going to have to sign a, a, a shorter term deal, but he's still looking to get ten million a year. So until he comes mm-hmm. off that number, no, no shot here after what they just gave Darius Slay. Uh, You can't have two players at that position. We've talked a lot about um, defensive tackle after bringing in Javon Hargrave. Well, you can't be giving out all these eight-figure contracts um, and then have any depth whatsoever. So you have to budget at some point. Uh, and I can't see the Eagles having two ten million dollar corners, and in case of Slay, much more than that. What uh, what did you think of the compensation they gave up for Slay, a third and a fifth? Is that oh, they got Slay for a third and a fifth, or uh, how he really had it? And the third is the comp pick they got for Nick Foles, correct? Uh, it, it, no, it's their uh, original pick. It's in the uh, I think eighty five, so they'll still have a third round pick. Uh, but that will be the compensatory one uh, that they got for Nick Foles. So they still have a third round pick. So that's important. But that's, I believe, in the, uh, the 100 early 100s. Uh, so it's not quite as good. But um, it, either way, I, I, you have to look at. You can look at it in two ways. Uh, I, I always say this. I, I mean, the Eagles were seriously, seriously thinking about giving up a first round pick for Darius Lay at the trade deadline. Uh, last season, and, and certainly probably would have pulled the trigger on a second-round pick. Uh, so when you look at it from that standpoint, you say, well, it's good. Um, on the other hand, what we just said and, and how he has stated consistently on the record is that um, we need to get younger, we need to have draft picks after going through two years, and all of a sudden, because they didn't get Byron Jones, uh, they had to give up draft picks to get a corner. So already he's given up draft picks that he didn't want to give up. So mm-hmm. you can look at it both ways. But I, I say, hey, you know, this league, and uh, not just Howie, everybody, everybody in this league, almost to a man, values draft picks too much. They just do. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, look, I said earlier we had the conversation about Yannick and Gakwe. You know, oh, they, they have a lot of interest, and who knows what. But I would be willing to give up a first-round pick to get a 24-year-old guy who could play at his level. I mean, you're just hoping that a guy can play at 21. When I got a guy at 24 years old that I'm pretty sure that can play. Yeah, and, and you know, in the case of Slay, I mean, that's what I, I joked. I mean, there's probably, a, and I put 2.3% chance of getting a player as good as him in, in the first round, first round to the draft. Never mind third and fifth round. Um, now he is 29. You have to add that into the mix. How, how long is he going to continue to play at the level he's been able to play at? And even last year, he didn't have his uh, typical type of season because mainly because of a hamstring issue, though. He still had to the press coverage ability, you could still see it on film. Um, so you weigh all that into it. A guy like Hopkins, I joke, there is literally, and I, I'm not, it, I'm not even, I said it yesterday, I think, 0.0% chance you're ever going to get a player as good as that uh, at, at the receiver position, even in this year where everybody claims it's a deep. You're just not. You're not. The odds of that are astronomical. But you know, it's like Monty Hall. Let's make a deal. Everybody's going for door number three, the unknown. Hope it's the big trip to Hawaii. Uh, it doesn't make any sense when you have players who are proven and still in the prime of their career, like DeAndre Hopkins, who's 27 years old, and teams are trading him because he's got too many kids. It's insanity. Uh, and even Stefan Diggs. I mean, when you start to talk about a guy like Diggs, you have to add into the fact that he's a pain in the you-know-what, and that plays into it as well. But generally, good teams are trying to develop players into players like that. 
So it never makes sense to me when teams are trying desperately to get rid of players. And what makes even less sense, and that's why I bring up Diggs, because in his case, everybody was lauding what Rick Spielman got for Stephon Diggs. He's not going to get a player like Stephon Diggs. He already got one. He's not going to lightning's not going to strike twice. We know that the Eagles do not value the linebacker position. Is it well, possible that Nigel Bradham does not get anything and he returns to the Eagles? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. A, well, and, and to be fair to the Eagles, nobody values the linebacker position. That's running back of the defense. I, I mean, it, unless you're an edge rusher in the 3-4, but you're not really – that should be labeled a different position. Um, it's just the way the game has changed. I mean, linebackers aren't as important. But in Nigel's case, there were some issues off the field. Uh, his no-call, no-show for the final preseason game – um, and then he did it again, which I think a lot of people don't realize. We reported it um, when he was hurt and he was out for that four-week span. At the very end of that, he, he missed a rehab session, didn't call the team, didn't tell him he wasn't showing up. Um, and his explanation was, well, I was going to play, so I'm healthy now, so I don't have to go. So the Eagles were kind of fed up from just some of the weird quirks and Nigel's a really good guy. I, I don't think it's anything more than that. But when you're working for a team, you know, that's like basic stuff. If you're sick or you can't make an appointment or you don't show up for your rehab session, you got to alert the team. And to do it yeah. twice in one season, uh, that's that's why Nigel isn't here even more than the contract and the value of the linebacker position. All right, uh, football at four, Johnny Mac. So right now you got uh, Jenkins out, you got Slay in, you got Hargrave here, um, you got Mills back, you got McLeod back. Um, and by the way, this is some crazy breaking news that just came down that Saints head coach Sean Payton has tested positive for the coronavirus as well. So there you go, another um, big name. Maybe um, maybe he can complain about the results. <laughs> maybe he's got the Maybe we'll get the rule change. There you go. <laughs> uh, or, I mean, I know this is right off the top of the head and that just happened, but does the NFL now have to shut down what they're doing because, well, what if our guys got got it? No, well, I, they are shut down. I mean, nobody's doing business. Uh, uh, all the Eagles uh, personnel people are working at home. Uh, all coaches are working at home. The IT staff uh, set everybody up. Uh, so they have a similar situation uh, as they would in the office. So everybody uh, is quarantining anyway. You can't have visits. Uh, one of the reasons teams have not been able to announce these moves officially is because of the physicals, and you have to get that done. Uh, and and so there's all these limitations already in place, and everybody is, for the most part, already self quarantining so it's the off season I, I don't think they have to change much I made a joke about Sean I hope he's okay obviously but uh, and uh, yeah I don't I don't think it's going to change much in the fact that they've already put those uh, plans into place yeah that's uh yeah just absolute breaking news as we're live on the show here that just came out. Rams cut Todd Gurley two years into his deal as well. They also cut Clay Matthews. So you're starting to hear uh, Joe Flacco was waived earlier today as well. So uh, a lot of things keep happening here. Things happen. But I want to go uh, so Jenkins out. Uh, Slay is in. Hargrave's in. Uh, they brought back Mills. Do you feel that that the direction of the team felt like it was changing, but do you change your expectations now based on what they currently have put together here? Well, I, th I think we're way too early in that process. Uh, I, I do think they got two really good defensive players. They certainly upgraded. Uh, this is the best corner by far they've had in the Doug Peterson, uh, Jim Schwartz era. Um, 
And Hargrave will see um, what the fit is. Uh, obviously, he played more of a 3-4. It's not the old school 3-4 in Pittsburgh where he would two-gap, but the Eagles, they, they, you know, it's interesting because Zach Ertz in whatever it was, 2013, I think was the 35th pick, and, and Slay was 36. The Eagles were weighing those two players and went with Ertz. And then in 2016, in the third round, they were going to choose Isaac Samalo or Hargrave. And they went with Samalo largely because they defaulted the offense because they were bringing in Carson Wentz as well. Uh, so they've liked both of these players for a really, really long time. And now they finally got them both, and they should both be significant upgrades. But they have so many issues at linebacker right now. They still have to fill that in. Uh, we talked about they still need a body at safety, need another body at corner. They need a, a, a swing tackle. They have to figure that out. And, oh, by the way, wide receivers sitting out there, which is going to be the draft for the big guy, first-round pick, um, it's looking 99% it's going to be a receiver, but they still need multiple bodies at that position. So there's still a lot of holes that this team needs to fix. They need another running back now. They need a backup quarterback still, even with Nate Sudfeld. So I, I think it's still way, way too early to project where this team is going to be. On NFL Network, Mike Silver reported that Zach Ertz turned down a contract extension during the season that was more lucrative than Austin Hooper's four-year, $44 million deal. Do you have any information on that? Yeah, the Eagles have been working uh, for a while uh, to try to extend Zach Ertz. Um, so, I, I, yeah, it makes sense that he turned it down because they've obviously been wanting him uh, to sign an extension. Um, and he's hoping, obviously, with his position to set the standard, raise the bar for that particular position. Um, so the Eagles still want to get something done. Uh, Zach loves playing here. I, I don't think that's an issue. I think ultimately they will get it done. But the more it does drag on, yeah, and the fact you do have Dallas Goddard, and you've seen, look, everybody in this league changes teams, it seems now. The free, even Tom Brady, we're at that point. But you've seen some of the high-profile names. We've seen DeAndre Hopkins. You know, two years after being um, the highest-paid running back in the history of football, Todd Gurley's out. Um, we mentioned Diggs, Calais Campbell. So just huge names uh, being moved. Um, you would have to put Zach in that category at some point if they don't get something done uh, because of the depth. Uh, but ultimately, I do believe uh, he, he he enjoys it so much here. Uh, he loves the organization. Uh, ultimately, I do think um, things get worked out. But they've been typically when the Eagles target somebody to extend, they get it a lot, they get it done a lot quicker. They've been able to get things done with Zach Ertz. So any, any time it drags on, you have to take notice. Hey, real quick, what did the contract Jenkins got? I don't can't believe we didn't ask you this earlier. Why we probably should have led with that. The contract that Jenkins got with the Saints tell you <clears throat> tells me the Eagles didn't want him. Uh, and I wrote about this on SI.com. I have to go back and forth now between. <laughs> 97.3, so sometimes I forget which one I put it up on. But in the case of Malcolm, uh, yeah, I mean, the Eagles offered to tweak his deal. So essentially he got an extra year from New Orleans. So forget about the four years. Uh, that's just for cap purposes. Uh, the Eagles wouldn't guarantee the extra year. Um, the Saints did. And he left because of it. And I'm a little surprised, to be honest. But it's a clear indication. The Eagles saw a descending player, uh, and they thought it was time. And it's the old adage we always talk about, better to give up on a player a year early than a year late. Uh, Eagles were willing to give Malcolm a little bit more, not a lot, but a little bit more uh, for 2020. 
but they weren't going to do anything for 2021, and the Saints guaranteed that extra year. Uh, very so, like it, that deal that they signed, the Eagles essentially would not have matched or even you know offered that deal. Is what you're saying? No, they didn't. Well, they yeah, I'm saying they didn't offer. All they offered right. Malcolm was to tweak his 2020 deal, guarantee it uh, for this season, and essentially, I think it was at 7.65 million scheduled to make this year. They would have tweaked that up to about 8.25, which is what he got uh, yeah. essentially from the Saints. Uh, but they wouldn't go any further than that, uh, and the Saints gave him both years. So. Uh, it, it was a bit of a surprise, uh, as I said, but a clear indication. And, you know, Chris Long, uh, all of these moves can relate directly back to Jim Schwartz. And Jim, uh, Chris kind of intimated it on Twitter. You know, Chris wasn't back because Jim Schwartz wouldn't guarantee his role and felt as an aging player it was better to go in a different direction. You're seeing the same thing happen with Malcolm Jenkins. Uh, he's John McMullen, football at four, and the football continues. Uh, breaking news, Sean Payton has tested positive for coronavirus. We'll have uh, more on that and other stuff during tomorrow's edition of football at four, and who knows what Hallie Roseman pulls off between now and Tomorrow's edition of Football at Four. All right, pal. Uh, John McMullen, all guests appear via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Thanks. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, man, at JF McMullen. And don't forget, 97.3 ESPN.com. And now he's got work over at Sports Illustrated. He's double duty with uh, great Sports Illustrated uh, coverage and on our website, 97.3 ESPN.com. They saw a great talent in John, and now he's national.